So give us an example, right? Um, you mentioned something interesting, that the job of design, when applied correctly, is to make everything grayer and things are messy, and when things are messy, better work gets done because of it. Mm. Um, I, I want to climb down from the abstract and come into the real world. Give us an example. Uh, well, if you're a small startup, actually, that is a, that's usually just how it is. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people in like a four or five person startup, like that was my, the beginning of my career was all like very small startups. Uh, where I would sit next to an engineer who was building the thing I was designing at almost the same time as I was <laughs> designing it. Like, you know, you're like, well, we have this much money and this much time, so uh, we should probably run. Uh, <laughs> and so, like, a lot of what we were doing is, like, I learned to code, right? Because, like, it would help him to not have to do certain parts of the code, right? So we could work on the bigger problems. Yeah. And he learned to, like, quickly make design decisions in, this, in a similar framework to me. And so we were constantly, like, passing back and forth you know, sitting right beside each other, like showing each other what we're working on and like getting feedback in real time. Um, and that was like a really strong like collaboration, obviously. Uh, and then like in a larger example, so I worked at Etsy before BuzzFeed. Mm -hmm. um, and at Etsy, I don't know if, I mean, it's been a couple of years, so I don't really know how it works anymore. But when I started, everybody in the entire company on their first day uh, deployed the website oh. to production. Code. Code. So like even the even the person at the front desk like would add themselves to the team page. Someone would walk you through it, like would sit with you and like yeah. walk you through that process and like show you how it worked. And it gave you this wasn't about design, right? But it gave you an appreciation for even if you never were gonna do that again, like what it takes to push it out. I mean, they had the system where we were deploying dozens of times a day, um, and it was cheap to do and easy to do. Yeah. Um, and that but that was also what was really interesting about that is the reason it was so easy is because like that was one of the metrics that engineering used was like, can a designer deploy this? Can anybody deploy this? Because they knew that we would want to and would need to. Um, and so I wound up like deploying code at Etsy all the time and it was pretty awesome and really empowering. And that like, again, that kind of gray area makes you appreciate what other people go through or like what uh, the strengths of other disciplines are and how to like utilize them uh, to make the best stuff, I think. Um, and so, I mean, that, that's one isn't like a design example, but you can imagine it going both ways. We're like, okay, cool, that's great. So we bring engineers into design reviews. We, you know, want their opinion on the design. They care a lot about the design because they are building it and deploying it and measuring it. Um, and so, like, that collaboration just gets really tight because you're working in the same space um, on the same types of problems. And is it, and when you use the word messy, is it because the roles aren't so defined that it, the structure is rigid and that it's more fluid as the problem evolves? Well, what's interesting is like, there's, I think there's a difference between like uh, specialty and like, yes. and execution yes. of that specialty. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I think like everyone respected each other's domain expertise, right? Like I respect the domain expertise of our data analyst, right? To know way more than I do about how to look at that data. They look at it all the time. Yeah. Um, I may ask them like questions and like challenge assumptions that they're making, right? But uh, but at the end of the day, like they are the domain expert, and I trust them. Um, or an engineer, right, who's building something, and they're telling me like, "Oh, this is really hard." We may have a very long conversation about why it's hard, and yeah. are there easier ways we could do this? And I'm going to disagree. Um, but at the end of the day, like their domain expertise is what is why we're having that conversation in the first place, yeah. and so. Uh, so product designers at Etsy and at BuzzFeed, which we'll talk about later, like are defined. I think like people know what their job is, mm -hmm. um, but actually, I, I can't speak for other disciplines. But at Etsy, like, and now here, like the job descriptions for product designers include product and engineering elements to like kind of force that issue. Um, um, so designers do write code at Etsy. Mm -hmm. um, they touch code and like they do think about product stuff. It's like a thing we measure, like your talent, like your, you know, your professional growth by, like, do you think about product things in a producty way? Do you think about data? Do you think about how things are built? Mm -hmm. um, and so you kind of bake that into the role description. Mm -hmm.